Welcome back. This is still TV3 New Day. And this time around, we are discussing widening the tax net. So if you know, uh, this uh, for the past three years, uh, this government has not been able to meet revenue targets. Um, and consistently, the government has introduced several measures, including uh, the introduction of TIN, uh, just so that we can look at a lot more people who are supposed to be paying taxes who are not paying taxes. There have been conversation on taxing the informal sector. So there are concerns uh, that uh, about 6 million Ghanaians are eligible when it comes to paying taxes, but just about 1.6 or 1.2 of, uh, of that, uh, of Ghanaians are paying uh, that, that uh, taxes. And government has been trying so hard to ensure that we widen the taxes. So that's what we are discussing this time around. And I've been joined in studio by Raul Jaban, who is the programs officer for Saint Ghana, as well as Bishop Nathaniel Rand Rudolph, who is a, uh, with the Ghana United Nations Association. And they are looking at widening the tax net. You know, Saint Ghana has been embarking on several projects, you know, developmental projects, and this is one of them. And so welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank so you. let me start with you, Rachel. Uh, Saint Ghana is looking at moving from regressive tax to progressive. Is that is that what it yes. is? Yes. Well, what does it mean? Okay. Thank you. Um, as mentioned, we've been uh, implementing this project, and it's focusing on progressive tax to improve inclusive development. Mm -hmm. And the focus is looking at government moving from more from the indirect tax systems. And so we talk about indirect. That is more of the consumable taxes to more of the direct tax systems. Mm -hmm. And looking at the direct tax systems, you're talking about um, the pay as you earn, mm -hmm. um, things, uh, property rates, those are direct, and so you're able to target a particular group or class of people. Mm -hmm. But the indirect is the VAT taxes that affect everyone, mm -hmm. no matter what, how much you earn. It doesn't right. look at your economic status. Mm -hmm. It taxes everyone, everybody is affected. And so this project was actually looking at um, some of the drivers of inequality. Mm -hmm. And if we can look at Ghana has um, really improved in terms of economic growth and looking at the poverty rate, we've been able to have it from 1992, which used to be 51.7 percent. And after 2013, we were 24.2 mm -hmm. percent. And so when it comes to reduction of um, poverty, we've really done well on that front. Mm -hmm. But then increasingly, um, IMF has also mentioned that we are one of the fastest growing countries in Africa in terms of increasing the inequality gap. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are looking at inequality, it means that there is a particular group of people who are doing very well, mm -hmm. but then some other group are also becoming worse than they used to be. Mm -hmm. And um, this is because probably we've not been able to create a lot of economic growth among the very poor, mm -hmm. even though generally the country is doing well. Among the very poor, not much has been done. Mm -hmm. And redistributing the wealth has also been limited to a particular group. Mm -hmm. So I think 2018, St. Ghana, Oxfam, um, Ghana, in, um, Ghana Anti Corruption Coalition had a research which mm -hmm. also said that the wealthiest 10% are, are consuming 32% of the wealth, mm -hmm. and the bottom 10%, only 2%, mm -hmm. which shows that the gap is widening. Mm -hmm. And for us, we're looking at how do you reduce those gaps? Mm -hmm. And one of the key drivers is about progressive tax system. Okay. So if you say progressive, uh, is it about taxing the informal sector? Taxing the richer more. And so whether the informal, the formal sector, those who earn more should be paying more. But with our current system, it's only it's able, able to target the formal sector. Mm -hmm. Because it's more formal, you're able to do the pay as you earn. Mm -hmm. And so you realize your pay slip, once you receive your um, salary, you've mm -hmm. already been taxed. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the informal sector, mm -hmm. it's so difficult for government to be able to do that because right. there's no structure. Yes. And then so t one thing is you need to widen the gap, um, the basket, tax mm -hmm. basket, to mm -hmm. be able to move away from the indirect taxes. That's a regressive nature. Mm -hmm. And we'll say that's more of a lazy way of taxing mm -hmm. because you ca you're not targeting. Mm -hmm. It's everyone, whether... Once you consume, you are paying the tax, right. and so whether you are poor or not, you are being affected. So, 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 yeah. So we are looking at commitments to widening the tax net. Um, I am actually concerned about the fact that we don't even have the database when it comes to the informal sector. You're saying that people who earn more should pay more. There are people in the informal sector who earn more than those in the formal sector. How are we taxing those people? 
So one of the recommendations that we had brought out was a government seeking to uh, widen the gap. And one of them, I think that the Ghana Posts mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. um, the digital system was one of the ways that government could have used and we are hoping that it will really work well mm -hmm. because it's more about being able to pin people than being able to target and i think the tin that's the yeah. identification, identification number, number. Yeah. is also another way that um government can use because once this is going to be linked to all other systems you are able to track and tax people mm -hmm. based on that and so it's about um getting the informal sector formalized mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be able to tax them so more. we'll talk about because i'm not really clear on formalizing the informal sector when it comes to taxing but let me come to you bishop and nathaniel rudolph you are with the ghana united nations association where do you come in yeah we we are the let's say project partners okay so um together with some stakeholders including the market women social disabled um, um, persons and youth groups mm -hmm. so send ghana um, let me use this opportunity to commend send ghana for this implementation of this program it mm -hmm. has been a very good one um, mm -hmm. the information has been very good education has gone on very well to the extent that now we she talked about the thing um many women in the marketplaces in fact they've mobilized themselves and they are rolling on on the thing mm -hmm. so education has been very good people themselves are taking the initiative to go and pay mm -hmm. for their taxes mm -hmm. uh -huh, because they they know the benefits of taxes with this program the impact has been great initially the information we gathered was that people didn't know about the fact that they have exemptions for example socially disabled persons they didn't know they have exemptions within the tax and administration system mm -hmm. um, persons in at the bra uh, age bracket below 35 youth mm -hmm. uh, in in business they didn't know they have some exemptions but with this ppti program they are now aware and they are taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So the impact is good. Um, there have been challenges so no, with regards, so far as we are concerned, the GRA. Mm -hmm. I, we believe that this education is, is, is it should be on the on the uh, shoulders of the Ghana Revenue Authority. So, so the association really, what, yeah. what are you doing uh, to support St. Ghana in this, for, in this uh, course to widen the tax net? It's not clear to me. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, um, with the education mm -hmm. they brought to mm -hmm. us, yeah, we are also spreading the, the news. Mm -hmm. um, so we scale down the knowledge to our members. Right. Right. So that our members who know the essence of paying tax and the fact that there are some exemptions to persons within our association. Your locally. members include who and who? Member within the Ghana United Nations Association. Okay, uh, okay. And the program also is not just Ghana United Nations Association, but there are other groups mm -hmm. together that uh, came uh, as stakeholders. Okay, uh, Rachel. So, um, for instance, there are concerns that masons are taking maybe eighty CD a day, hundred CDs a day, and if you look at a normal worker, you know, you don't. If you look at how much you earn at the end of the month, you look at how much you're taking daily. If you put it together, you don't end that much. So we are talking about moving from regressive to progressive. Exactly what does this, um, does this program entail? Okay. So the focus of the program was to be able to target the socially excluded. One realized that there was a knowledge gap. Okay. As the people even understanding what the tax is, what the system is, how they can contribute, what they qualify, how they are exempted. And so closing the knowledge gap was to be able to involve the social excluded in the debate. And so one of the strategies was to educate them. And so we partnered uh, with Ministry of Finance, the tax um, department, then GRE, to be able to educate these socially excluded people on what the, ta what the tax system is, 
how they can contribute their quota is their civic responsibility as citizens to be able to pay taxes and how they can work with them eff effectively and also mm. for the citizens themselves to be able to engage in some of these discussions mm -hmm. so like you mentioned so we work with the market women association okay those in more colored artisans okay and one of them was to tell them that this is what government is using our taxes for this is what it's supposed to be used for mm -hmm. this is how you can contribute and they, we also had education that saying that if you're earning below 300, it means that you don't fall within the bracket to pay the tax. Mm -hmm. And if you are earning above this, you are supposed to pay tax. So mm -hmm. those are the kind of the educations we've been able to give them. Mm -hmm. How can you pay it? And GRA has also acknowledged the fact that they don't have the resources to be able to move to everywhere. And so most of the time, these women have to go and pay their taxes themselves. themselves. Yeah. And, and usually so, they don't. Because, because why would I have looking to at move time. Yeah. Why would I have to yeah. move there? So, so St. Ghana is breaching that gap. We are not breaching the gap in terms of taking the money to pay, mm -hmm. but giving them that sense of responsibility that you need to do it. Okay. And creating that sense was also get them to be able to educate and understand themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I can say that 5,000 of the market women have been registered on the team. 5,000? Yes, okay. this was not so an initiative. So the impact has been good? Yes. Right. Rachel uh, Jabba is a programs officer for St. Ghana, and they are championing this um, this course of widening the tax net and uh, you know ensuring that the informal sector is brought on board and bishop nathaniel rudolph is a, with the ghana united nations association they are partnering with saint ghana on this very particular project